Boys and girls, okay, right, I'm finally on my way home from Barton. I've got out of the wilderness and uh, I need to get home. So uh, for this week's Discoverers, welcome back. And uh, let's get into uh, the car. Uh, so uh, I need to, need to get back home so I can carry on doing Discoverers. But we are on uh, Season 7, Episode 6 already. Wow, only two more episodes to go until the summer break and uh, so that's really exciting isn't it uh, but that means not too far away now from our camp as well uh, which is going to be here at Barton um, which is going to be very exciting uh, as well uh, with uh, all the activities and fun and games and things like that that's going to be happening but we've got a question for this week haven't we we've been looking at some questions and uh, this week's question is this what is heaven like what is heaven like well we're going to try and answer that we've got kezia to come and help us simon says time uh, as well we've got songs we've got um, the challenge uh, as well somebody is going to be taking on kezia doing the ping pong ball water cup challenge and uh, so that's going to come up in a little bit too so uh, thank you for joining us uh, enjoy the rest of this episode sing along to the songs and I will see you very, very soon. Is heaven for real? After Jesus died on the cross and came back to life, he promised to give a special gift to his followers. He told his disciples that he was going to go back to heaven and prepare a place for them to come be with him forever after they died. He said he would make a special place for people who put their faith in Jesus and chose to follow him. Jesus said there would be enough room for all of his followers from all over the world. How can you go to heaven? Going to heaven is like a wonderful present you can only open after you leave earth forever. Jesus promised that one day he would come back to get all of his followers and bring them to live in a new, perfect world without sin. The Bible even says it will be like getting new perfect bodies and new white clothes to wear with no sickness, no sadness, no pain, and no fear. God's people will be rewarded in heaven for all they did during their life on earth to bring glory to God through the way that we live and love. But you get to go there because of what Jesus did, not because of what you did. How can you know you'll go to heaven? 
The Bible describes it like having your name written in a special book in heaven. Anyone who asks Jesus to take away their sin and gives their lives to Him will have their name written in the book of life in heaven. Even though we don't go live there until after we die, the Bible says we are citizens of heaven and already have confidence that we will live forever in heaven with Jesus. But what will heaven be like? Even though we can't know exactly what it's like until after we die, the Bible does give us a few pictures about what it's like. The clearest picture God gives us of heaven is in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Many years after Jesus left earth to return to heaven, the Apostle John was the last one of the 12 disciples still alive. The rulers of the Roman Empire sent John away to the island of Patmos as punishment for teaching people about Jesus. But that didn't stop John from carrying the good news about Jesus even further. God showed John a special kind of vision, also called a revelation, where God showed John what was going to happen in the future. And that future includes when all of Jesus' followers go to heaven after we die. God showed John the throne room of God in the center of heaven. Even though John may have been able to see heaven clearly, it was hard for him to describe in words because it was unlike anything he had ever seen on earth. Everyone in the throne room was all doing one thing, worshiping God. The elders and angels all did nothing but worship God all day, every day. Everything about heaven is all about God. John tried to describe other things he saw, like the colors. He said they were like jewels or prisms that reflected like rainbows. But no matter how we like to imagine it, the Bible tells us that no eye has seen and no ear has heard all of the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Hey boys and girls, I hope you are all good. <laughs> okay, so today I decided to draw my dream house okay so <clears throat> don't laugh at my drawing boys and girls but here it is this is my dream house okay let me just show you some parts of it um so here is like the main part of the house um and this is me at the top this would be my bedroom in the attic i think that's quite cool to have your bedroom in the attic and this thing here is an ice cream machine which would just be in my bedroom um, and I could just get an endless supply of ice cream. That would be great. And here, down here, is the pool. It's going to be an inside pool. When I showed this to Phil, he said that it just looked like I had a flood in my house. But this is actually a inside pool. Uh, this would be the dog's kennel. I really like dogs. And I, in my dream house, would own a lot of dogs. So this is like the dog's house where it would be. And then this tower here, it's not Rapunzel's tower, like my mum said. But it is the Helter Skelter ride. There'd be like a roller coaster inside my house. So you climb up the stairs and then you could like Helter Skelter down like a big slide. Um, and then this is where my family would live, obviously. So um, there would be mum, dad, Phil, V, whoever wants to live here with us. Ta-da. So that's my dream house. Maybe when you've got some time, you could think about what your dream house would be. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. But the reason I showed you that is because this week's verse is this. John chapter 14 and verse 2, which says, My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? So this week we're thinking about heaven. And <laughs> heaven will not be anything like my dream house okay heaven will be so much better okay <laughs> but it's amazing because this verse talks about the fact that jesus has gone to prepare a place for anyone trusting in him in heaven and it says his father has many rooms God says, there's there's room for everyone in heaven. How fantastic is that? When we think about heaven, it's just going to be amazing. And it's going to be a place where anyone who has put their trust in Jesus Christ will go, which is fantastic. So 
Um, when you think about what your dream house would be like, also think about the fact that God, Jesus, has gone to heaven and he has prepared a place for you. Six, five, God's alive. Four, three, two, one, He's the King of everyone. God's the mighty, mighty Lord of all. Again, come on. Ten, nine, eight, God is great. Seven, six, five, God's alive. Boys and girls, so uh, it, it is challenge time. We need to go and find somebody who's going to do this week's challenge. And this person is going to be up against Kezia. And uh, so we'll go and have a look and see if we can find anybody uh, around. There seems to be lots of people. Not very good weather, to be honest. But we will find somebody. So um, I think... Who can we find here? Oh, okay, so we have a brownie. Oh, I wonder if brownies are good at doing challenges. Are brownies good at doing challenges? Yeah. Yes? Are you up for this week's challenge? Okay, come and follow me and we'll tell you what you have to do, okay? So here we go, we have Zoe and uh, she's gonna be up against Kezia doing this challenge. All right, so it's a really good challenge. So she's picked her ball. She's got a blue ball. She's put it onto the first cup and she's got to blow it along and see how far she can get in one minute. So Zoe, are you ready for this? Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'll start the timer. On your marks, get set, go. Oh, there's one, excellent. Two, really good. Oh, and right back to the beginning. That's 15 seconds gone. It's a bit tougher now because you've got some of the water gone. <laughs> you've got 30 seconds left, Zoe. It's stuck in that first one, isn't it? <laughs> Have you been drinking the water as well at the same time? <laughs> 15 seconds left. See if you can get out of there. <laughs> but not in your face, those. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Oh, that, that, you got it on your face. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so you got up to cup number three uh, on that go. So well done. You'll find out later what Kezia has got. Thank you, Zoe. Well done, Zoe. Three cups. Give me fingers right. How many? Three. That's it. 
three cups you got the ball along are very well done so we'll find out in a little bit what uh, Kezia is able to do and uh, see if the boys and girls can pull away on the points uh, it's three two at the moment to you guys or see if Kezia and Kezia can draw level with you we'll find out in a very little bit thank you very much Kezia for your time uh, trying to answer this question uh, what is heaven like uh, really good we've got Simon Says time coming up and also we've got uh, a serial story set over three parts over the next three episodes of uh, Dr Bernardo uh, a Christian man a very long time ago and uh, what he did um, for the boys who lived on the streets um, of uh, this country and uh, how he helped them uh, as well so we're going to have that in a little bit uh, as well but uh, let's get on with this next half of discoveries at home let's find out what Kezi can do uh, in her part of the challenge uh, as well and uh, I will see you at the very end one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On day number one, God made light. He made the day and he made the night. On day number two, God made the sky. It's big and blue and way up high. Whoa. Whoa. On day number three, God made the sea. He made the land, every plant and tree. On day number four, God made the stars He put the sun in the sky, super duper far Whoa. Dolphins and whales and things that go squish On day number six, God made animals and bugs Foxes and cubs, all for us to hug Whoa. Whoa. On day number six, God also made man He said it was good and part of his plan On day number seven, God stopped to rest He saw what he made, it was his best Whoa. Boys and girls, welcome back to Simon Says Time. And we're looking at these big questions, aren't we? And this week's question uh, is quite a toughie because um, it's this. What is heaven like? Now, nobody has ever been to heaven and then come back and be able to tell us about it. So we just have what God's word says about it. And uh, we're going to look at that and uh, hopefully give you a great picture of what heaven is like. Someone said this about heaven. It is where God is and sin is not. Where God is and sin is not, which is a great place to start. And it's a very good answer, isn't it? Uh, but we can carry on because in heaven, because sin cannot be there, we will see God's glory in its fullness, in its brightness, in its amazingness, uh, if that's a word. 
Um, but we will see God's glory in heaven. So that's something that we will see there. What won't we see there? Well, we won't see any sadness. We won't see any pain. Like we, you know, when you bang yourself and oh, it really hurts. No crying as well. No sadness, no pain, no crying. We'll see God's glory, but we'll also be able to worship God. Not just with the other Christians who are there and the other believers, but with the angels who are there and all the heavenly creatures, being able to worship God all in that one place. Now the Bible refers to some mansions in our Father's house, in heaven, in God's house. Will there really be mansions? It could be, couldn't it? But whatever Jesus is referring to here, we know that it'll be something amazing that our minds can't even imagine. Now, I can imagine building a big house out of Lego and thinking, yeah, I'll do this and it's going to be really, really good. And I can see it and I can think about it. But what is heaven going to be like? That something unimaginable. What does John 14 verse 1 to 3, this is that verse just on the side of the screen. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. So there is going to be a place for you and there's going to be a place for me, for those people who trust and believe in Jesus. But what is the most important thing that we've read in that verse? It tells us that Jesus will be there. Not only will we see God's glory, the creator God, but Jesus is going to be there uh, as well. We know that it's going to be an awesome it's going to be a beautiful, holy and pure place. And really, really, I'm getting my hand to the end of the screen and it's going off. A really, really big place. Unlike anything we've ever seen before. Now, I've been to Scotland, up into the mountains, and you can see for miles and miles and miles. But this is going to be even bigger because... That's where God wants his people. And what about your age? I'm a bit old. What about your body? Mine's a bit old and achy. And uh, that is not really made clear in the Bible. But let me tell you what the Bible does say. The Apostle Paul, if you remember Paul in the Bible, describes the body as a tent. Uh, something that is temporary. Uh, that will be gone when we die. This outer body. Uh, when our souls go to be with God in heaven. And the Bible tells us that one day we'll have new physical bodies, new bodies that will be different from the bodies we've got now, not all this stuff, but there will be new physical bodies. Now, what will the changes be? We don't know for sure, but I truly believe it will be something like Jesus' resurrection body. When Jesus rose from the dead, um, his body was... Well, it was a new body, wasn't it? And our body is going to be like that. No aches, no pains, certainly no illness uh, at all. But can you see what else is in that verse? Right at the end. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. Do you know what, boys and girls, if we are really true believers, if we have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts, if we have Jesus within us, and we've asked for our sins to be forgiven, he will come back again one day, and we'll be able to be with him in heaven. I think that is a great promise that Jesus gives us. What is heaven like? It's going to be amazing. It's going to be unimaginable. Is going to be the place where just everything is awesome and we could praise and worship God and Jesus.
I remember asking a little kid once, what do you think he's going to do when he's going to heaven? He says he's going to go and give Jesus a high five. Um, we'll be able to do that in heaven, won't we? And thank him personally for what he's done for us. So boys and girls, remember that verse. There's a place for you in heaven if you are a true uh, believer in Jesus Christ. And it's going to be a great place, isn't it? New bodies, no pain, no crying. Just being with Jesus, our creator God. Well, hopefully that has given you a, a vision and uh, an excitement uh, for what is to come uh, in our future. Uh, but boys and girls, I'll see you again very, very soon. I'm going to tell you something about my life. My name is Thomas Bernardo. I was born in 1845 in Dublin in Ireland. I should start my story when I was a boy. That way you'll understand the things that happened in my life that changed the way I saw the world and my place in it. When I was a boy, I was grumpy and selfish and thought only of myself. If someone else had something, I felt it really should be mine. I was short and ordinary. I got angry at people for no reason. And when they didn't get angry back, it made me so confused. Then something changed, although it's hard to say exactly what happened to make me see the world differently. For starters, I grew up. I changed from the boy who could only think of what he could do for himself into a man obsessed with how he could best do things for others. It was as if I needed to make up for all the things I had taken. That's why I decided to go to London, to train to be a doctor. My plan was to go to China once I'd qualified, to help poor people there. But I soon realised there were plenty of poor people right under my nose in London, in desperate need of help. The East End of London was one of the poorest places a person could find themselves. A slum it was, cramped and dirty and stinking and just plain awful. Not fit for a dog. But there were thousands of people who had no choice but to call it home. They lived all crammed in together, sometimes dozens to a single room. It was a maze of filthy streets, a place where disease and criminals ran riot, and a place that could drive a person to despair. I wanted to help, but at first I didn't know how. I walked the slums and tried to read the Bible to people to give them hope, but it wasn't enough. I knew that because school was something you had to pay for, the children who lived in the slums had no chance of an education. So I decided to set up a school. It was called the Ragged School. Girls, I have six cups, one ball. I've got to blow the ball across the six cups as quick as I can. Phil's going to time me. If it falls off, then I've got to put it back to the start. Are you ready, Phil? Three, two, 
one, done. <laughs> I can't do it. How long have I got left? Two, one minute is the cut off. I'm gonna go down like this. Ready? How long have I got left? Ten seconds Let's left. Can... <gasps> that one worked! <laughs> oh! That's the start. <laughs> Time up. Oh, that's way harder than I thought it was. I'm quite wet and my head not. Let's see. Boys and girls, if you did a better job than me, I failed. <laughs> Noah built the most enormous boat They kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him Get to know our God again The Lord is good The Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him So, Kezia, uh, let me think. Uh, cups, move the ball along by blowing. Hmm, I think maybe there was a little bit of cheating going on there. So, actually, how many cups did you get it across? 
just the first one. So that means, Zoe, you are this week's winner on the challenge. And that then puts the points up to 4-2. 4-2 to the boys and girls. So uh, that is really, really good. Well done, you guys. And uh, we're going to look forward to another challenge for next week uh, for you guys uh, as well. And somebody's going to take Sarah on in doing a challenge. So that's going to be really, really exciting. But boys and girls, uh, I hope we've answered this question, what is heaven like? Well, it is going to be a great place. And uh, God wants everybody to be there, as many people as we can. Uh, we want to be in heaven with him one day, don't we, uh, in this great place for eternity, forever and ever, uh, worship and praising and being with God, uh, our Father, with Jesus there too. High five him, certainly. Uh, he has done so much for us, hasn't he? So, boys and girls, it has been really great to be with you today. We look forward to next week. I say just two more episodes left after this one uh, until the summer break which we're all looking forward to but uh, for now boys and girls it's tally hose and toodle pips